Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to do a hands-on exercise related to AWS Java SDK. Basically, we'll see how we can use AWS Java SDK to write a Java program which will help us in creating a new bucket. As you already know, AWS SDK for Java provides a set of libraries, set of functions which a Java developer can use to simplify the overall project development using AWS services. In this video, I will also show you how to set up a Maven project using the available templates. And as you know, Maven is a tool which is used for compiling and packaging Java projects. As part of this lab exercise, we will write Java programs to create and delete the S3 buckets. Then we will use Maven to compile those programs and build the deployment package. Then we will execute the package and observe the results. And we are going to use Cloud9 as the IDE where we are going to develop these programs. Let's start by launching the Cloud9 environment. So we are in the AWS console. The first step is to launch a Cloud9 environment. So click on Cloud9. Click on Create Environment. Name you can give Cloud9 Java. Any name you prefer you can give. Description you can just copy the same thing or you can give a detailed description. Then select New EC2 instance. You need to select the instance type as T3 small. We need at least 2 GB RAM. So select T3 small. Platform Amazon Linux 2 is fine. Leave all the other fields as default values. Come down and click on create. Now you can click on open. It will take a couple of minutes for Cloud9 to get ready. But click on open and let's pause the video until the Cloud9 comes up. So Cloud9 is up and running. So we will be doing all the work in this terminal. So let us make it big. You can click on this. The Cloud9 terminal is big now. As a first step, you can check if Java is already installed. So Java version. So you can see that Java is already installed. You can check Java compiler version as well. That is the advantage of using Cloud9 environment. Most of the commonly used runtimes would be already installed. Now we need to install Maven. Maven won't be installed already. You can check that with Maven version. It is not there. So let us install Maven. I am copy pasting some commands and these commands will be included in the cheat sheet the link to which will be provided in the video description. Now we need to make some smaller changes in the configuration file. Let's open the configuration file and see what needs to be changed. Here we need to replace this release version. This variable need to be replaced with the number 6. So how do we do that? You can use this command. Now it is replaced. Let's cat the file again. You can see that the release version has been replaced with the number 6. The next step is to install Maven. We just downloaded the corresponding software package. Now we are installing Maven. Okay, now we need to create a new Maven project. Creating a new Maven project means it will create a project directory structure and it will download the basic software packages which are required for building the Java projects along with the project object model or pom.xml file, a default one. Later we will have to update the pom.xml file based on our requirements. So here is the command for creating the project, Maven project. The Maven project has been created. Before we proceed, let us quickly check the command which we typed. So here is the command. You can see Maven archetype generate means you are asking it to generate the project structure. The group ID is AWS example S3. This will be part of the project structure, project directory structure. We will see that. And my app will be the root folder. Again, we are going to see that. And there are different templates for Maven projects. And here we are going to use Maven archetype quick start. There are several such templates available. You can search in Google and find out that. Then the interactive mode is false. If you put the interactive mode as true, 
then when you compile or when you are building the projects there will be many more log messages which will be printed out so to avoid that you can put interactive mode equal to false so now we have got the maven project created how do we check that to view the maven project structure we can use the tree utility so we need to install tree utility first sudo yum install tree minus y okay tree is installed now how do we use that just type tree dot it will give your project folder structure in a tree format this is the maven project which was created by the previous command which we issued so you can see this is the root folder within that we have the pom.xml which is nothing but the configuration file for this project then src main java aws example s3 this is where we are going to store our source code and the test cases will be stored here in this structure this is the maven project structure which is created by the command we issued now we need to edit the pom.xml file if you do ls you can see my app go to my app and just do nano pom.xml you can see that by default it has downloaded a hello world programs pom.xml file you can remove pom.xml and create a new one okay now let's create a new one nano pom.xml and i will copy paste the contents here but i'll include this as part of the cheat sheet and the link will be provided in the video description so let me copy it okay i have copied the pom.xml file we can quickly go through that so many of these are common the model version is 4.0.0 the group id aws example.s3 so that will be part of the directory structure as well and my app is the root directory the packaging will have the jar file and this is the version number you can change it if you want to give it as 1.0.0 etc you can change it then we have some plugins for creating the package and we need a jar file with dependencies because we are going to include aws java sdk as one of the dependencies because our programs will require the sdk libraries the main class create bucket that is fine if you come down you can see that as one of the dependency we are adding aws java sdk this particular version and then the compiler version is 1.7 which we are using so this is done now you can type control x and it is asking save modified buffer esy and it is asking file name to write pom.xml you can just enter okay the pom.xml file is updated so the pom.xml file is ready next we need to get the java program to create the s3 bucket so where do we place that particular file just do pwd and just do ls go to source src then go to main java and here you will see the project structure we had created aws example s3 so you can do aws example s3 do ls you can see that already a hello world program is there if you want to see that you can see it's a hello world program we don't need it so let me remove it up dot java so there is nothing there now now i'm going to create a new program called create bucket dot java and i'm going to copy paste the code and i will provide you this code as part of the cheat sheet okay i have copied the code we will quickly go through the code we will not go line by line but very important parts so package aws example s3 this is the package the package statement specifies to which package the class is defined belongs to there is only one class that class will belong to this particular package and then we are importing a few functions from the java sdk all these are part of sdk and then even the regions because we need to choose the region where we are going to create s3 bucket then some java utilities and this is the class create bucket and you will enter two arguments one is the region name one is the bucket name that's why it is checking if the number of arguments is less than 2 then it has to give the usage and here you can see the bucket name is the first argument and region name is the second argument and this is where it creates the s3 client so that going forward using the s3 client we can access the various lower level apis of the s3 service so first what it does is it is listing all the existing buckets 
and then as the next step it is taking the bucket name which you are entering as part of the argument it is taking that it is first checking whether that bucket exists or not if it exists it will give an error message else it will try to create the bucket by calling s3.create bucket and if there is an exception it will again it will print out some error message once that section is done it will say the reverse list of buckets is here and you will list the buckets once again and this small function is to list the buckets and here also it is using the s3 low level api s3 dot list buckets so that's all the code we have so again control x say y and just enter so that you have your create bucket dot java here so what is the next step now you can go to your root directory and compile the code and create the package so go to cd slash environment slash my app okay now let's do mvn clean package which will compile the code and create a package let's see how it works so you can see that because it is building this load for the first time it is downloading a number of packages basic packages or dependent packages okay it is done and the build is successful just do ls and you will see a folder called target and if you do ls target you can see the various jar files it has created and this is what we are going to use while executing this code and if you do ls target classes aws example s3 you can see the class which was created after compilation like this so you can see create bucket dot class so next step is to execute this code and create a bucket so let me execute it whatever bucket name i am using please replace it with your own bucket name when we so just look at the command java minus cp then you are giving the jar file name here and you are giving the class name and then you have to specify the bucket name and the region that's what i have done you can see here that before executing it it is listing the buckets just before jan 17 it is training to 2023 but here after it has created the bucket it lists that again unis bucket april 04 just before jan 17 if you do aws s3 ls you will see your new bucket listed there okay now we need to delete it of course you can go to the management console and delete it or you can use cli command to delete it but we are learning sdk so let us use another java program to delete this bucket so what do we do we will again go back to the source code directory and then create a new program so we are here in s3 and you can see that create bucket dot java exists let us create delete bucket dot java and let me copy paste the code you will also get access to this and the structure of this program is also somewhat similar to create bucket okay i am not going through the structure of the program just you can see the difference here difference is this instead of create bucket you are using delete bucket that is the main difference so click control x y enter okay so your delete bucket dot java is also ready now you have to go back to your root directory you can just do cd minus you will go back there now what do we do we have to use mvn clean package command to build the load mvn clean package this time it should be faster because this is the second time we are building it okay the build is successful just do ls target and see if it has created the jar files etc so the jar file it is the same thing same file name so let us execute it let me copy paste this control v so basically i am going to delete the same bucket you can see that delete bucket and then i am specifying the same s3 bucket name so let me do that first it will list all the s3 buckets you can see that april 4 is also listed here then it deletes it and it doesn't appear here basically that s3 bucket is deleted to confirm you can just do aws s3 ls once again you can see that the april 04 bucket is not listed here so we are done with a java sdk program to create and delete s3 bucket 
This is a simple one, but it can help you in your preparation for AWS Developer Associate certification and uh, Solution Architect certificate, etc. Now, before we close, we need to clean up. We need to delete the Cloud9. That is the only thing which we need to do because whatever S3 bucket you created, you have already deleted it. So go to AWS Cloud9 and select this and then click on delete. Delete, delete. Okay, that's it for this particular video. I'll come back soon with another useful video. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your support. Bye.